one. Look at the size of that crater that that pig left. They couldn't have been there for more than, what, five minutes? No, he, he wasn't there that long. That's insane. That thing is a foot and a half deep. Look at this. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> the farmer had just plowed that today. That is nuts. I mean, that's up to right there. That's uh -huh. a foot and a half. That is insane. People don't think that they actually cause damage. And we're just killing them just for fun. Yeah, we kill them for fun, but that right there costs money. Yes, it does. Put another one in him. For the past several decades, an epidemic's been creeping its way onto most of the operating farms across this country. And just about every farmer, including several we personally know, have declared an all-out war on a devil with hooves. Wild pigs have officially earned their place as the most destructive creatures in North America, costing hard-working farmers millions. They still over there? Yeah. And frankly, they're sick of it. They're kind of moving to the right but slowly. Ooh, there's a big one with them. There's two or three big ones in that bunch. Yeah, but the one that's kind of gray, he looks like he's the biggest. They look like they're working their way down that tree line and just going to the right, Gary. What makes him so gray? Reckon, it's all, reckon he's been in the mud? Or what? Probably. Good luck. Don't get busted. Yeah, right. <laughs> do what I can do. I'll be right behind you. Just go about 50 to 100 yards and stop. Okay. Gary had gotten a call a few days ago from a landowner having a serious problem with pigs. So we figured we'd try to get out and locate his problem. And here we are. It literally only took a few minutes in the area with Thermal to get a beat on our suspects. And now it was just a matter of getting close. You know, it still amazes me how much Thermal has drastically increased our success over the past few years. And for that, I have to give all the credit to Ultimate Night Vision. They took our world of night hunting and added an entire new dimension to it that honestly we never even knew existed. So if you're someone wanting to do this and have a blast, you gotta give them a call. One common thread we've noticed about these bigger groups like this is they always seem to have what I call the lookout. He'll be the one pig off all by himself, away from the main group, looking for any trouble that may threaten the herd. I can't tell you how many times we've been stalking a group like this, and everything was going great until the lookout makes us out and sounds the alarm. I know it sounds crazy, but we've seen it over and over where the one pig off by himself will be the one to bust you and blow the whistle. And that's exactly what's about to happen here. Which one? Uh-oh, looks like someone sees something a bit fishy.
Well, after the stare down of the century, he finally convinced himself those statues in the middle of the field were no threat and started to catch up with the group. We got super lucky just then, because nine out of ten times that situation ends up with him blowing and running off the whole group. The main thing to remember is always keep an eye on any pig on the perimeter of the herd, because if there's ever one that'll make you out, it's that one. You have to remember being off by themselves. They don't have the distraction of sounds and movements of several other pigs around them in their immediate area. So anything out of place is like a beacon of danger. At least that's my theory as to why the lookout can pick you out so much faster and easier than the rest of them. They're way less distracted and on alert by not being mixed in with several other pigs and anything out of place gets scrutinized that much harder. Unfortunately for him, playing lookout made him our number one target. Besides the fact he was the closest one to us, no one really likes a whistleblower anyway. There he is. Stinky sucker, too. <laughs> I didn't think that thing was ever going to die. Uh-uh. I thought the way he went down, he was done. I was trying to find another one. When I looked over, man, he was he was doing his best to get up and get out of there. And we were too close. <laughs> <laughs> he was doing some rooting, though. He was throwing some dirt. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure that this was the same one that was busting us when they were kind of further down the, the pasture. I do too. He was the lookout. Yeah. Do you notice he was hanging 20, 30 yards behind the bunch? Well, he come out of the timber, he come out of the tree line, and he went about 75 yards out on his own. Mm -hmm. And everybody else was remaining in that one area. Close. When, he, when he did, he went back, then all of a sudden it was just like... He I caught us moving to what happened. Mm -hmm. When they pick you out, you just better just be still. Don't move, because he had a beat on us big time. Well, he, he watched us and watched us and watched us. And then all of a sudden, he stopped and let his guard down. All of a sudden, he jerked his head right back around. All I know is we lost him over this. There's a little little small hill right there that, man, you could just see just the barely just the top of his back. And I thought when I first saw him that he was just laying down. But he wasn't. He was standing there rooting the whole time. Well, I was looking at the two that were showing up better right here. And I said, which one, the left or the right one? He said, no, the one on the road. And I was like, I don't see one on the road. Yeah. And then I panned back around and I picked him up. But he was, he had so much mud on him. The thermal was kind of, yeah. made him look gray instead of the white. I was, I was shooting with white hot. Now I can see why he looked like, kind of like a razorback. Because he has, there's one spot on this whole pig that doesn't, doesn't have, have mud. doesn't have mud. That's why it stood out in the camera. Landowner's gonna be happy. Yep. We killed, what, five or six off this guy in the last two nights? Mm -hmm. They are some nasty, nasty creatures. Destructive devils. Well, you wanna leave this one for the coyotes? Yep. You can call landowner in the morning and tell him he's got one basically right here on the edge of the pasture. Well, the landowner's tractor right here behind us about 50 yards. I'm sure he'll see him. Yeah, he'll see him propped up. Good job shooting. Oh, I'd just like to have got more, but the night is still early. Killing one or killing 10 is a step in the right direction. When you know just how much damage a relatively small group of hogs like this can cause in such a short time. We were actually packing up and on our way out when I nearly broke an ankle stepping off into a massive crater one of those pigs left in literally a matter of minutes. 
Look at the size of that crater that that pig left. They couldn't have been there for more than, what, five minutes? No, he, he wasn't there that long. That's insane. That thing is a foot and a half deep. Look at this. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> the farmer had just plowed that today. That is nuts. I mean, that's up to right there. That's uh -huh. a foot and a half. That is insane. People don't think that they actually cause damage. And we're just killing them just for fun. Yeah, we kill them for fun, but that right there costs money. Yes, it does. Especially if it was planted. Yeah, he planted that, what, two days ago? Mm -hmm. Good grief. Them pigs will go right down a freshly planted cornfield and pick seed by seed by seed. Yeah. It's amazing. Everybody thinks they're stupid, but they're not stupid. Uh-uh. They survive. We try and kill as many as we can, as often as we can for this very reason. It's only until you've seen and experienced damage like this in person, till you finally grasp why farmers hate them so much. We just showed you an example of what happens when you pay attention to the lookout and things go your way. But what happens when you take your eye off of him for a split second and you make a move when he's looking at you? Well, you're about to find out just how fast things can go south. Gig was up. We'd been made. You're getting busted. Shoot the one that's got a silver back. That's how one single pig can change the outcome of a stock completely. In Ronnie's defense, I later found out I'd moved the scope's reticle to the wrong position. He beat himself up for days thinking he'd messed up when it was actually all on me. Sorry about that, Ronnie. In the road. In the road. I guess it helps when the gun's not hitting a foot low at 50 yards. That was a critical error on my part, but learning from your mistakes is a big part of night hunting. Anyone who says they've never made a mistake out hunting at night has either never been night hunting or is just full of it. You gotta just learn from them, cause that's how you get better. Here lately, Ronnie's been after me to get some time behind the camera, so I jumped at the chance to get on the gun. He told me that he started feeling bad that I rarely get to shoot because I'm always filming for everyone else, but I honestly don't mind. As long as I can get enough trigger time to keep from getting rusty, I'm good. Thanks again, Ronnie, for letting me shoot. I'll try and make sure the gun's on for you next time.
One of the craziest encounters we've ever had with a group of pigs is one you'll have to see to believe. To this day, I'm not exactly sure what happened here. All I know is we had these pigs lit up like a Christmas tree with our lights, and they could care less. We hear guys all the time swear that a white light will spook a pig. Well, I don't know what to tell you because we're burning the hairs off the backs of these pigs from the rig, and it's not bothering them a bit. I'm sure this may be more of an exception than a rule with this particular group, but if anyone ever claims it's impossible, this footage proves otherwise. Just like a coyote, in my opinion, it all boils down to conditioning. If they ain't seen it, they don't know to be afraid of it. It was blowing like a hurricane on this night, and I really don't think these pigs could figure out what was happening. We were having to yell from only 50 yards away for Matt to even hear us. They just stayed in one spot and never moved, and that's unheard of with pigs being shot at. Far left. Keep walking to your left, you'll see them. Right there. Finally, after several shots, they decide maybe it might be a good idea to leave. <laughs> Pig hunting is something that gets in your blood and will make you become a night hunter when you least expect it. It's an addiction like no other. We never thought just five short years ago we'd be chasing these nasty creatures all over the county the way we do. But you try it just once for yourself and then you'll understand it. If you really want to try this, there's only one place out there we trust. Ultimate Night Vision's been a key partner of Night Cruise since the beginning and has taught us a wealth of knowledge about the world of thermal. And we're thankful for their continued support as none of this would be possible without them. In closing, I would also like to thank all of the pigs out there for simply being a pig. Without you, none of this would be possible either, because all of us pig hunters wouldn't have nothing to shoot at. Get that begging again. 
one on the right's coming right at us. Got him that time. Oh, there it is right there. Huh? There it is right there.